So let's now talk about attribute binding. Sounds really boring, but this is actually a really powerful feature of Alpine that allows you to bind pretty much uh, any attribute value based on an expression. Let's go ahead and look at a really simple example. So we're gonna go ahead and pull in X data here. Just to initialize this, we're not actually gonna do anything inside of here. But let's go ahead and create out a span which can potentially have a bold class on it based on an expression. So by that I mean normally what we would do is we would apply a class directly to here. Let's say am I bold and let's go ahead and just create a really quick inline style at the top here but you're probably going to be using a library like Tailwind or some other CSS framework. So if we go over and give this a refresh sure enough that is bold but what we can do is bind this conditionally. So let's go ahead and try that now. For this, we use X bind. We give the name of the attribute that we want to bind in, and this will actually end up as an object. The key for this is the thing that you want to bind in. So that's the class that we want to apply. The value is the expression. So for example, we could say true. That's always gonna be bound in because of course, we are just passing in true. Now again, you see this flicker in here. That's just because we need to wait for the library to load to be able to actually apply that class. Uh, but again, we'll deal with this kind of stuff later. Now, if I set that to false, of course, that's not going to bind that in. And you can see we don't see any bold text. Now, with this, we can apply multiple classes as well, even if we already have an attribute inside of this element with pre-existing classes. So, for example, let's say that we had another class called blue and the color of this was blue. Let's go down. Let's apply this class directly into here blue and we can have this blue and bold because X bind will as the name suggests bind this into the existing class set so if we come over and give that a refresh that is now blue and bold if we inspect this you can see that we get both of these in here because of course it's just binding it in now we're dealing with an expression based on a hard-coded value here but what we probably want to do is have some kind of toggle for this Let's go ahead and set X data to have a selected value and just say that that's false for now. Now, if this toggles, we're going to set this to selected. Let's get rid of that blue class as well, because we're not going to need this for this example. And let's create a button in here and let's say X on click set selected to true. And we'll just say make it bold, for example. So now we have a button which toggles some data with a class being bound in based on that data. Let's go over, give this a refresh, hit make it bold, and there we go. That class gets bound in and we see bold. Now, this isn't the most useful example. It's probably rare that you would do anything like that. So let's move on to something that's slightly more useful. Let's say that you had a form inside of here which could only be submitted once you had entered a value. So for example, let's just kind of build this form out here and this let's just say is some kind of name that we want to enter in we're going to bind this potentially within the form itself to hold a name so we know that that is x model and name and let's create out a button in here to submit this so let's just say let's go and let's go and say type of submit of course okay so that is our form what we want to do though is we only want to enable this button once we have entered some data now to disable a button we just use the disabled attribute let's go over and that's disabled now when i type as i type so as soon as this actually has some kind of content i want to enable this how would we do that with alpine well again we can use x bind in here and because we can bind pretty much any attribute, we can bind the disabled attribute. And we can bind that on the condition that name doesn't equal, or if it does equal, an empty string. So if it does equal an empty string, we're going to go ahead and make it disabled. Let's go over, give that a refresh. Of course, by default, it's disabled. But now as soon as we start typing, you can see it enables. So as long as this value is actually filled, it's going to let us go ahead and submit this and of course we're just submitting this directly through at the moment and not handling this event if we wanted to though we could go ahead and say x on submit 
and prevent the default behavior. And why don't we just alert this out? So let's just say, hey, and then output the user's name. Let's go over and there we go. Hey, Alex. Now let's look at binding in a slightly different piece of data. And this is going to be the style attribute. Now, why would you want to bind in the style attribute of an input or some kind of element on the page? Well, this works really nicely for progress bars. So let's build out a really simple progress bar. So again, we're going to start with X data in here and let's set the progress to zero by default. So of course that will go from zero to a hundred. Let's create our native HTML progress element. If my editor is actually going to allow me to fill this in and it's not, so let's go ahead and do that manually. And with this, what we have, well, let's just close that off real quick is a max value, which is of course usually going to be a hundred depending on what you're using this for. And we're going to have some kind of text inside here as well to represent the progress. So in this case, we could actually create a span out inside of here and say X text, and then we can actually output the progress in here with the percentage. So let's do that now. Let's say progress. And then after this, let's say percent. So that's going to look something like this. Now at the moment it's at zero percent. So it's just kind of bouncing back and forward, depending on the browser that you're using. But now we want a button down here to actually increment that progress bar. So we know how to do that. We just add an X on click event handler and we just set the progress to increment this. Now I'm going to do this by a slightly higher value. So let's just actually do this properly. So we're going to set the progress to the progress current progress plus five. So what that's going to do is actually increment that value. But at the moment we're not doing anything with that value. The progress bar in here doesn't represent or bind in any kind of uh, value that we have. So what we can do is we can use X bind and we can bind in the value inside of here. We're not quite looking at the styling side of this yet. We'll do that in just a minute, but this is just to get us started. So we're going to bind the value of this, which would normally look like this. So for example, if it was 50% along, it would look like the following, obviously halfway, but we're bringing back the X bind to actually bind the value based on the progress that we have. If we give that a refresh and start to increment it. Sure enough, you can see, that that increments all the way to the end until we hit the max value. So now that we know how XBind works, let's move over to the next episode and actually look at a couple of practical usable examples, including a better progress bar.